Lucifer is certainly an on-screen hit due to its charm and engaging story, but it also has a certain level of charm and great stories behind the scenes. Doing the devil's work can be hard work, and that is something the production crew found out when working on the former FX and now Netflix show Lucifer. But their hard work and sacrifice has paid off, and along with a great cast, gripping visual effects, and interesting anecdotes has become a global treasure. It's become a favorite among fans, and it is these behind-the-scenes moments that's made the show so popular. With season 5 dropping on Netflix this year and season 6 in the works, Lucifer keeps on rising in popularity and has made all of us want to know what exactly goes into making it. In this video, we'll take a dive into the making of Lucifer and have a glimpse into all of the work that goes on behind it. From tight production budgets, crazy stunts, and of course, a pinch of Tom Ellis, we will take a journey down into the depths of hell together as we look behind the scenes of Lucifer. Can we skip the boring part where you deny it and just uh, let's get to the good stuff, shall we? Now, one of the things that makes Lucifer is its visual aesthetic and use of effects. Due to the fact that the actors don't have their own set of wings or that Tom Ellis has the face of the devil, let's face it, far from it, a great deal of effects are used throughout with the use of both CGI or VFX and practical. But as you can imagine, these effects cause their own deal of problems. While big blockbuster movies like Avengers Endgame may have had a swollen budget of 356 million US dollars to splurge on effects such as Thanos giant chin and fat Thor, TV shows like Lucifer don't have the same luxury, with the show having approximately 54 million US dollars per season, which isn't exactly peanuts to you and me, but to TV shows it doesn't give them much to work with. This means that Lucifer often had to be thrifty now and then and make decisions for practical cost-saving reasons as opposed to storytelling reasons. An example of this is Lucifer's angel wings. As we mentioned before, while he may have the face of an angel, Tom Ellis doesn't actually have the wings, so the production team had to splurge on a virtual set for the actor. Initially, the producers were going to cut the wings due to budget concerns, but decided that it would be worth the cost. And with that season 3 finale, they would certainly be right there. But it isn't just a budget issue. Actually creating these giant wings is a very difficult thing to do because, let's face it, they're not exactly pigeon-style wings, are they? The VFX team would have to come up with the idea from scratch, which, calling back to the Season 3 finale, was particularly hard to do in that scene. In the scene, Lucifer uses his wings to shield Chloe from the bullets raining down on them, and to create this was quite the challenge. They took two months to work on that scene alone, with the rendering time for a single frame taking nearly six hours, which in TV production time is an eternity. This is because the VFX team had to create a different array of feathers with a number of layers of effects on top of them to show the various stages of being hit by bullets. 16 variations of textured feathers were used to give the wings an authentic look, all of which was rather time and money consuming. This meant they had to save a little bit of cash where they could, so instead of Lucifer flying out of the scene like Superman as he was supposed to, he just disappeared into smoke like Batman man because that's a lot cheaper. But not every time a bell rings or a penny is spent does an angel get its wings. Because of the mounting bill needed to pay for Lucifer's wings, another angel had to lose his, a menadeal. And you, my feathered friend, can go to hell. The reason he lost his wings wasn't for story purposes, but just because they couldn't afford to have any more wings in the show. Sometimes it does pay to be the devil. Oh, Lucifer's devil face was another tricky concept. Initially in the pilot, the face is prosthetics, but was later replaced by VFX to give the face a little bit more depth. This made the experience a lot more comfortable for Ellis, who no longer needed a mask, but instead a load of mocap spots on his face, which Ellis described as looking like he had measles. Even those spots didn't manage to blemish his annoyingly perfect face. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Can't get enough. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have what's now known as a resting Satan face. Action scenes, however, are a mix between practical and VFX. Big explosions and crashes are VFX because it usually costs quite a lot to blow up a functioning building, plus, you know, property tax. But for smaller scenes including gunfire, firecrackers were used. The best use of practical effects also happened in the season 3 finale, where air cannons were used to wreak havoc on the set. But the thing was, the building they shot in was actually a real functioning building with people living in it. So the production had to pay them to leave for a bit as they began to basically tear it up. 
up. However, this meant that the team were in a race against time to get it done before the residents returned and got caught in the crossfire. But uh, in their haste, it was actually one of the crew members who got caught taking a shot in the back of the head. Yikes. But it wasn't just him that got hurt while filming. A number of the actors don't actually have any stunt crew for their fight scenes and have to practice out the choreography for themselves. Some of them do find it fun, but admittedly picked up a number of cuts and bruises along the way. The show was actually initially shot in the cheaper west coast of Canada in Vancouver as opposed to LA, due to LA being such an expensive place to film. But after season two, the crew decided to move the show to the City of Angels and proceeded to film there, with the producers saying that the city itself serves as a character. But even more production moved back stateside. There were some real landmarks used. For example, the Sunset Tower Hotel, which was the inspiration for Lucifer's Lux Piano Bar and Penthouse, meaning you can literally stay in hell if you wanted to. If they don't have chocolates on the pillows, then it's actually worse than hell. But uh, after the show moved to LA, it got prematurely cancelled by its original network, Fox. Until it was saved by Netflix, so Lucifer fans could chill. But it wasn't the first time the show was nearly binned. Due to its religious references, it was seen as blasphemous and caused an outcry among some members of the audience who banded together to get the show cancelled before its initial release. But thankfully for Lucifer fans, Fox took their chances and released it anyway, and it quickly became a smash hit. Fox also gave Lucifer a lot more free reign than you might expect. In fact, it even shocked executive producer Joe Henderson when he had to convince the network to include the season 1 finale where, spoilers, we learn Lucifer and Amenadiel's mother has escaped hell. When they pitched it to Fox, they weren't sure how they were going to react, but Fox apparently loved the idea. The fact that Lucifer is so popular also might have something to do with the fact that it already had an established fan base. The character was initially introduced in Neil Gaiman's Sandman comic book series before spawning its own independent comic, unsurprisingly titled Lucifer. Now that you may have heard about, but what you may not have known was that the original character was inspired by musician and cultural icon David Bowie. As you can tell though, the show went in somewhat of a different direction. Although Bowie as Lucifer would have been a hell of a watch as well. But while the comic inspiration was Bowie, Ellis took his inspiration and character growth from renowned poet Oscar Wilde. The TV series though also moves away from the comic book series quite a bit, and falls more into the crime procedural format that is so popular in the TV industry. But despite the changes, Gaiman is apparently a fan of the show and gave it his thumbs up. In fact, his exact words were that it was a sexy, mad, bad Doctor Who, which I guess is a compliment. Also, does anyone kind of want to see Ellis as Doctor Who now, or is that just me? But it wasn't just the fact that the character was based on Bowie that nearly made Lucifer very different. That's because initially, the character was supposed to be American, even after the British-born Ellis was cast for the role. But Ellis didn't think that the American accent worked for the character and made him unlikable and even more cocky and rude, which, to be honest, he is the devil, so what were you expecting? So Ellis tried out his more natural British accent, and he and the studio agreed that it suited the character more and allowed him to get away with more things as it sounded nicer coming from a Brit. Mays, darling, would you mind running down to the wine cellar and fetching Mum? I think she'd like to hear this. Let's face it, he's not wrong. Plus, Brits make the best anti-heroes and villains. If you were worried, though, that the cast hated each other, then you would be sadly right. Just kidding, they get on like Lucifer and a glass of whiskey. In fact, they all get along so well that you can often see them dancing with one another on their social media pages in order to pass the time and just in general having a great deal of fun. Another way they have fun is by playing pranks on one another. One instance was by allowing their prop guy, Ben Krakowski, to turn the crew's meat and platter tray that they have for lunch into a work of art, transforming it into a face that does remarkably look like the show's devil face. <laughs> Maybe they didn't need to spend all that money on CGI after all. They could have just used meat and olives. But with there being so many laughs behind the scenes, it is unsurprising that it draws a number of stars to the show. One such star was Smallville star Tom Welling. The actor had virtually retired after his run as Superman in the show and was apparently worn out and finished with the world of television. And seeing as he had been on a show for so long, this is somewhat unsurprising. But the producers of Lucifer managed to convince Welling to return to the small screen for their show, and to not really think about it, and apparently that was enough to do it. Wow, he is really easy to convince. The power of the devil, after all. But the devil doesn't have a hold on everyone, chiefly Ellis's children, who apparently don't care for the show 
or the fact that their dad is a huge celebrity with his face on billboards. Each their own, I guess. And uh, finally, here's a little bonus one for you. Not only is the character of Lucifer a lover of music, but the actor too, with Ellis actually being a musician in real life and even being a master of the French horn. Maybe we should steal him a blue one like Ted Mosby in How I Met Your Mother. If you don't mind, I really must be on my way. Have a nice evening. <laughs> you too, officer. You too. So what do you make of the show? Are you a fan? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more interesting content.